thank you very much once again. And uh, now, actually, we're really um, uh, happy and thrilled, glad as well, that we will welcome, we would welcome Dr. Patrick Webb, Alexander McFarlane, a professor, I hope I got that right, from Tufts University. Uh, Dr. Webb, uh, as well, is the director of Feed, uh, um, of Feed the Future Food Systems for Nu uh, Nutrition Innovation Lab, and he will address sustaining health mothers, infants, and children in Jordan, titled Prioritizing Effective Food Systems, Policies, and Nutrition Interventions. Dr. Webb, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. What a great, great pleasure to be here. Uh, an honor to be speaking with such a distinguished uh, group of people, professionals of, of so many kinds. So it's my job, my role here, to, yes, focus in on infant and a young child and maternal nutrition, but to set that somewhat into a broader context. Um, let's see here. We have a three-day symposium. We're going to hear a lot of very detailed papers that dig deeply um, into these topics. And we're so grateful to the Ministry of Health, the Government of Jordan more broadly, USAID Mission, for um, making this possible. Um, we are focused squarely on the mother and the child, so the pregnant woman, woman, the baby, the infant, definitely. All of these, uh, this is the beginning of life. But we have to set that in a context. We do need to ensure that that life starts with the best possible optimal food for that infant, which happens to be breast milk, right? That's the best diet for the child. But that optimal diet needs to then continue through high quality complementary foods, high quality family foods, right? and then ultimately everyone needs to be able to consume a high quality diet. That is the, one of the fundamentals of prevention of disease around the world, as in Jordan. So you're going to be hearing a lot about food, not just health. And I'm going to emphasize that because they are inextricably linked, starting with breast milk, but then going through the diet. And you're going to hear terms like the, the food environment, the environment in which mothers and others have to choose the kinds of foods that they consume, right? So what what they choose matters immensely to the quality of their diet. You're going to hear about food security, which is an increasing concern with high rising prices uh, because of Ukraine and beyond. Um, but that's not just about calories, it's about the quality of food as well. You're going to hear about the choices that people uh, make as individuals and choices that adults make for their children. All of these things come together, they cluster together to bring about whether or not there is a healthy diet in the home or not. And that is a corollary. It's an underpinning of all facets of health. It's an underpinning of whether or not a mother is healthy enough and able to breastfeed. So my talk in a nutshell uh, is essentially that the first affordable healthy diet for a child is exclusive breastfeeding. Right? And we have to ensure that that happens that it's possible. We have to support the mother to be able to do that. But everyone in Jordan should be able to consume an affordable, healthy diet. That is a fundamental for achieving health goals. At the same time, the, the, this, is, this matters because of prevention of disease. We heard from the minister. Uh, diets are now, and I'll explain this, one of the top drivers in the world and in Jordan of the disease burden in the country. And this is something that we're only waking up to quite recently. This is relatively new finding that we knew that what we smoke is going to harm our lungs, but what we eat or don't eat is equally damaging uh, to our health in various ways. So achieving health goals 
yes, requires high quality health services, which are amazing, by the way, in Jordan, uh, and IYCF services, but high quality diets are part of that. So like trying to change behaviors around hygiene or breastfeeding and, uh, and so on, choices around diets represent modifiable risk factors. Right? We have to bring information to bear. We have to enable people to make right choices through knowledge, through information, but also through purchasing power and through desirability. Right? There's a lot of things that go into a choice in what to eat or in what not to eat. So while high quality health services are fundamental, other sectors need to play a part in achieving health through healthy diets. Right? That's the, the essence of what I'm going to say. Now, the country has health strategies that have been uh, in, uh, in, uh, implemented already for many years, but only, only recently, really in the less than a year, has the country been talking about a sustainable food system. And health matters as part of that. The goal of Jordan, uh, through its own uh, National Pathways document, is to enable the, tr the food system to be more supportive of infant and maternal health. And part of that is through achieving healthy diets for all, right? So this is a strategy uh, from today out to 2030. And there are lots of elements that are going to be part of that strategy. One of them, not the only, but is diets. Now, globally, it's now a truth. It's now a scientific fact that poor diets are directly responsible for one quarter of all preventable mortality. This is astonishing. And it's in large part because we've done so well, this is an irony, we've done so well in addressing things like TB and tobacco use and HIV. So we've brought those down as risk factors but done very little about the risk factors that are associated with poor quality diet. So they have taken over. So what you see in Jordan over the past, uh, roughly a decade or so is you see um, not much change yet. Uh, Tobacco has remained fourth major uh, risk factor for death and disability, so health-related disability. But undernutrition, malnutrition, has fallen in relative emphasis compared with high body mass index, high blood pressure, some of the uh, non-communicable uh, chronic diseases that the minister uh, was mentioning. So what we have uh, today, top three risk factors in Jordan for mortality and disability are related to diets. Top three, but also uh, five and six, and eight. So out of the top 10 in Jordan today, six of the top 10 stresses, the risks, the threats to health relate in various ways to poor quality diet. It's either eating the wrong foods or not eating enough of the right foods, right? That's what, it, what we're talking about in poor quality diet. Th now, this is really important to understand and it's really important to digest that it is changeable. These are modifiable factors. You don't wait to treat people, you try and prevent. And prevention in this case is going to require a lot more attention to uh, what people eat. You look, just look at the, the, ri the numbers of uh, r rising prevalence rate over a 10 year period. It's exactly what uh, Mr. al Khawari was saying the, the few, there is a future that carries dangers, and now is the time to act to prevent those dangers. Uh, fortunately, we can. Now, just for mortality, yes, non-communicable diseases are now carry by far the greatest burden. Uh, risk factors just for mortality, not, not morbidity. Uh, and non-communicable diseases are very much related to poor quality of diet, too much sodium, too much of, as I said, too much of some things like sodium or sugar or, or, or not enough fiber, not enough of key nutrients, right? So it's, it's finding the sweet spot, the balance between the right stuff not, and getting rid of the wrong stuff, uh, but throughout the life of an individual. 
So these risk factors don't, there's also communicable diseases. It's rightly been point out, pointed out that Jordan faces a double burden, potentially a triple burden of these NCDs, communicable diseases related to diet, but also um, vitamin and mineral deficiencies that are specific, uh, some of which have been treated through uh, micronutrient fortified foods. So it's not one thing, but all of those major risk factors relate to what we eat. Now, I'm going to pause there and say, but Jordan is doing relatively well on so many fronts, and it's easy to, po to focus in on, on the negatives and, oh my gosh, all the problems. I, I would say this even if the Minister of, Agri of Health were not here and others were not here. Uh, Jordan has a well-developed well health delivery system, and it's reaching a lot of people uh, in its goal of universal health care coverage. There is much to be proud about in, in that regard. Uh, the latest numbers in terms of uh, intake of fruits and nuts are close to the recommended daily allowance for adults, much closer in Jordan for the rest of the MENA region, the Middle East, North Africa region, which is amazing. Fish intake per capita higher than the rest of the region, and even globally, right? These are foods, the, these are meritorious foods. These are foods that we want people to eat more of in most countries. Jordan's already doing pretty well in that regard. And in fact, there's lower spending on ultra-processed foods in Jordan than in most other countries of West Asia, using a different regional categorization uh, in 2018. So there's much that we can be proud of and much to build on. But that means building on it now, acting now and changing the reality of our future, to use His Excellency's uh, terms. Early initiation of breastfeeding is one of those things that has seemed to have improved uh, in recent years. Early initiation of breastfeeding in the first hour. Uh, actually, just as an aside, a study of ref Palestinian refugees in Jordan around the same time uh, showed about 49% early initiation, so quite a bit lower than the rest of the Jordanian uh, population. Uh, and that's good. But it's not the only thing that matters, right? That it's not so good in terms of exclusive breastfeeding. It's not so good in terms of the use of formula, infant formula as a substitution for exclusive breastfeeding, right? So you can see there are some wins, some things are improving, but at the same time, let's not take our eyes off the ball in terms of the things that are not yet where we want them to be. And so, yes, Jordan is indeed doing very well in its uh, progress towards the SDGs. But in specific nutrition target terms, global targets for nutrition, um, actually, Jordan is actually off course, which not necessarily well behind, but not yet on target to achieve certain key goals relating to uh, infant and child and breastfeeding certainly is, is a problem. Um, and uh, issues relating to low birth weight, and of course, um, blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, which are all not directly linked to obesity, but definitely have an association with obesity. Now, in terms of global targets, Jordan is not actually yet fully accelerating towards these goals. And there are ways to do that, um, but it's going to take a concerted effort uh, to achieve this. Now, the, the danger, the, f the future full of dangers uh, is something to take very, very seriously. If we already have, let's say, roughly 12%, but I don't know what the latest number is, but the, the Global Diabetes Atlas puts around at a, more than 12% diabetes right now, that's only going to grow if actions, appropriate actions are not taken. And the, the serious uh, threat across the entire MENA region is that by 2020, uh, 2045, we see something like uh, an 80% increase in actual diabetes. And that carries, that's just one non-communicable disease that carries such a burden for the health sector, such a burden for the individual and the family uh, budget. We have to be really, really attentive uh, to this potential future. That is one that could change. Now, don't focus too much on the specific numbers. These are from the, uh, the uh, Institute of Health Metrics uh, and, and Evaluation. 
But what they suggest is that between now and 2050, um, total spending on healthcare in Jordan is going to increase quite significantly. The amount that the government is going to have to spend through its health budget is going to increase quite significantly. But so too what families are going to have to spend out of pocket. Right? And that is in large part driven by spending on diabetes, high blood pressure, all the medications that they're going to be having to, to buy. So the economic burden uh, uh, that is going to, uh, that has potential to uh, affect Jordan is quite serious. So let me shift to, well then, what do we do about it? Obviously we continue to strengthen health service delivery, we expand IYCF programming, we enable mothers to be themselves well-nourished and to appropriately breastfeed their children. But achieving healthy diets, this whole environment in which the mother has to raise her child, requires multi-sector perspectives and multi-sector initiatives, right? And a lens that brings together the strengths of all ministries towards a common goal. And so it's not enough to just have the right foods available. Those foods have to be accessible to everyone through the appropriate food environment. They have to be affordable to everyone. The right foods need to be at least as affordable as the cheapest alternative in terms of ultra-processed foods. So the relative price of foods has to be in such a way that people can afford to spend their money on the right diets. But they, that diet has to be desirable. They have to understand why that healthy diet is healthy and what are the right choices and how to prepare those, right? So it's an integrated approach that is going to be important. Affordability is going to come up a, f a few more times during these few days. Um, the, 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 as I said, the price crisis is such that already an estimated 15% of all Jordanians cannot afford a healthy diet today, using today's local prices uh, and what foods are available. Uh, but, okay, what that means that 85% could afford a healthy diet, but many of those are not making the choices to use their money to, abide, to purchase a healthy diet, right? So they're 15%, that's about a one and a half million people unable to afford the healthy diet. And of those who can afford it, not everyone is able to or choosing to. So we need to understand that that's something that uh, has to be changed. There are lots of different ways, and I'm not, this is not prescriptive, this is just suggestive, of ways that we can think about adding to the health service excellence in other domains. Now, a recent uh, systematic review just, just published in the Journal of American Medical Association by, commissioned by WHO, uh, considered the evidence there is in low and middle income countries for subsidizing good foods like fruits and vegetables. It could be nuts and seeds, or it could be legumes, right? Or it could be eggs, whatever it is. But there is strong evidence that where the price of fruits and vegetables were subsidized, sales of fruits and vegetables increase significantly. That's not a surprise, right? It's all about relative price. Same with the opposite, taxing unhealthy foods, whether it's ultra-processed foods or uh, sugar-sweetened beverages, uh, higher prices cut the sales of those products, right? So figuring out how to achieve an appropriate balance, what it would cost to do that, how you target it in ways that are meaningful for low and middle income households matters. Trade, uh, this is a country that relies a lot on food imports. What foods, right? Leveraging trade policies can also achieve healthier diets if we understand what kinds of foods are being imported because Importation can fill gaps in the local supply where you can't produce enough eggs or enough milk. Uh, shift the relative price of products. Um, fill gaps that are seasonal, 
right? It's not available seasonal locally, so importation can fill those gaps. Um, and ha set higher food safety standards, and I'll come back to that as well. So importation of foods really can be very supportive of a healthy diet as long as we understand which foods are being imported and why. Right? So diet quality is one of the outcomes of uh, leveraging trade policy uh, to, to think about these things. And j this is just a snapshot of imports of, of certain key foods and what you can see here is imports of uh, sugar, infant foods and prepared foods in Jordan and you can see uh, an uptick in the last uh, five years of data, quite significant, well not significantly but it's an uptick um, versus for example fresh foods which have been going down. Understanding what is going on in terms of food supply matters to health. And health professionals, I would suggest, have an important voice in this whole arena. They need to be heard more clearly. Because if you, you look at the supply uh, over time from 20, 2000 to 2018, um, what we're seeing in terms of the availability, the available supply nationally in Jordan of fruit has gone down regardless of how much it's grown or imported, the availability has gone down. And it's not looking so good about pulses, eggs, milk, other nutrient-rich foods. So it's not just a matter of saying, eat more nutrient-rich foods, if the supply of those foods is not available because the price relative to other foods will be much higher. Right? This is why our health goals are embedded in the wider economy. We should, we, there's a lot of attention these days to food loss and waste. Not just growing more or importing more, but when those foods are here, making sure that they are not wasted. Right? So every time you waste an apple, it has to be grown again. Every time we throw away what's on a plate that, that could have been, that was perishable, uh, it has to be grown again, it has to be imported again. There's a lot of uh, multipliers in that. Now, Middle East, North Africa, actually, the rates of loss, food loss and waste are considered to be quite high globally. That's in part due to the temperature, the environment, right, the lack of refrigeration. And, of course, nutrient-rich foods are typically more perishable. They're easier to waste. Milk goes bad. Fruits go, go bad. And a lot of that uh, in this region is happening in the value chain where these products are processed or packaged or retailed, right? So we can hone in, we can try and do better to figure out what technologies, what innovations, what policies could help reduce the losses of these particular foods in these segments of the value chain, right? But again, this goes beyond health sector in its conventional sense, but these are things that matter to health um, in a big way. Um, there's, there, again, a positive. There does seem to be some improvement uh, in the last decade. A little bit fewer losses of vegetables, a little bit fewer loss of, of fruits, probably, again, due to refrigeration and better handling. Um, but we see losses of cereals slightly increasing. We just have to keep an eye on this as an issue in terms of food availability to the consumer. I said I'd come back very briefly uh, to, to food safety. Food safety is one of the core elements these days of, of not just health but nutrition. Uh, a, a, study, uh, a systematic review of, of 46 studies just published, again, uh, in 20 middle and low income countries. Uh, unfortunately, Jordan was not one of those, but 20 middle income countries um, found, for example, as you see, uh, in places like Turkey and, and Vietnam, consumers afraid to eat fresh fruits and veg because they have concern about the pesticide use or certain chemicals that were used to, to protect those fruits and veg, to keep them looking good as they're on the marketplace but in fact, they're soaked in formaldehyde or other chemicals. And so concerns about the food safety of, of nutrient-rich foods leads them to be afraid to eat those foods. Now that is terrible. That is a chronic problem that needs to be addressed. 
and it can't just be addressed by eat more fruits and vegetables. Right? We have to address this concern at the source. And in the same paper, concerns about food adulteration and the hygiene of open markets um, led to families in places like even Indonesia and Mexico and Iran and Turkey to say, well, we'd rather buy packaged foods because we trust them more. We think they are safer. They, they are not going to carry the same disease, the same problems as fresh foods. Again, this is a terrible problem, a perception. Maybe it's true. If it's true, we have to deal with it. If it's a perception, we have to deal with it. Because influencing these dietary choices means we have to address these kinds of concerns of the consumer. So back to that food systems uh, summit, uh, we, we saw that having the right foods and healthy diets for all uh, is a goal for Jordan. It's a goal that has to, the, intended to be achieved in the next eight years. That's not a very long time, but then a lot of things have to happen in those eight years. A couple of the things in this same document uh, that are suggested, and I didn't write this, but one is, is a boost in support to the kind of things we're doing here, applied research, a research that is scientifically rigorous but can support and inform policymakers in all sectors, the health sector, the trade sector, the agriculture sector, and beyond. Right? So Jordan committing to more of this kind of research, and then also to monitor and evaluate and assess all of these trends that we've been looking at. Are we making a change? Are things getting better? And there will be a midterm review in just a few years nationally uh, on, on those kind of questions. Which brings me just very briefly to the Community Health Nutrition Project that, that USAID is funding in the, in the country. It's a, an activity that seeks to contribute to not just that monitoring and assessment of are we making, uh, having impact, are we uh, doing things differently, but it's trying to improve the quality of services, trying to educate uh, communities on ex exclusive breastfeeding and dietary practices is embedded in there. So this is just one project, uh, one illustration, one example of the kinds of integrated activities of which we need so much more. So conclusions. Um, behavior change matters at the individual level, but it, oh, it also matters at the policy level too. Uh, we need change uh, within households. We need change at the policy level. We need change at the business level. I haven't mentioned a lot the private sector. Of course, the private sector has a big role to play when it comes to food environment. But behavior change matters for infant and young child feeding. We start there, we end there. Exclusive breastfeeding, care of the mother. This is the place to start. I'm a, just two weeks ago, became a grandfather for the first time. And I'm, I'm so happy about it all. And I see my daughter-in-law uh, struggling a little with exclusive breastfeeding in a perfect and optimal environment in the UK. It's not always easy. None of these changes are necessarily easy, but we have to take that into account to achieve the goal that is so uh, important. So we start with the right food, and we need to carry that through the life cycle. Everyone should be eating a healthy diet. Now that involves education, it involves the right dietary guidelines, the right food labels, and so, yeah, of course, it, it, all of that. But getting the economic incentives right to make the right food choices is just as important, right? So the relative prices of foods, those 85% of Jordanians who, can, who could afford a healthy diet, who are not, in fact, choosing a healthy diet, we need to help them make those right choices. And that goes beyond guidelines and labels. It's partly a more coherent policy agenda. Um, but again, I, I put a, a plea to you that health professionals of all kinds have an important role to play in getting these messages out. Don't just talk to other health system people. You have to convince the rest 
of government, the rest of the, of the system that is dealing with, with diets, uh, that this matters. Because, yes, again, I re-emphasize, right now Jordan's doing very well in terms of health system coverage and the quality of services, or, and even in some aspects of diet quality. But now is the time to change the reality of our future. I'm borrowing His Excellency's these words again. Change the reality of our future, because now it's relatively good if we don't act appropriately today, 20 years from now, is not going to be so good. The health system will actually achieve its goals of health, not just disease treatment, but of health of the population if all sectors of the economy are pulling together towards a common goal of universal access to healthy diets, in addition to universal access to healthcare. And I'll stop there. Shukran.